Recently, I received a query that is uh, pseudo gout, same as CPPD, that means calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. And the answer is no, because a particular form of CPPD is known as colloquially, commonly known as pseudo gout. Because CPPD, which stands for calcium pyro, first P is for pyro, second is for phosphate and dihydrate, and the D is not for dihydrate, but for the deposition. So it's a calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystal deposition disease. So when this CPPD, this calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystal deposits, it could manifest in many ways. Uh, many times it will remain asymptomatic, only there could be a chondrocalcinosis, that means cut calcification of the cartilage, which uh, detected in the X-ray radiographically or it could present in an acute synovitis, which mimics or resembles like gout. Or it could present in a chronic form, which sometimes resembles like rheumatoid arthritis, also known as pseudo-rheumatoid arthritis, which is a chronic inflammatory synovitis. And sometimes it could be associated with coexistent with osteoarthritis. And also other than that, it, it can cause uh, neuropathic degeneration, can cause spinal involvement. So these are the various ways that calcium pyrophosphate crystal deposition disease can present. Out of this, the acute inflammatory synovitis, which actually causes an acute inflammatory episode, that closely resembles like gout, acute gouty arthritis. And this particular variant is commonly known as pseudogout. So because as such CPPD, there's calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, not uh, only can present with this acute inflammatory synovitis, but it can present in many ways. Many CPPD patients may not present in this pseudo gout kind of way. So the first big concept that you need to keep in mind that the currently, that is EULAR, which is the current nomenclature followed by since 2011, uh, in that this whole group of disease, the umbrella term is CPPD. C stands for calcium, P for pyro, P for second P for phosphate, dihydrate crystal, and the last D is for deposition. So in these disorders, a particular crystal, calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystal is getting deposited in joints. And this group of, if it, if it results in a disease, we call it CPPD disease. And if, but many times it could remain asymptomatic. Now, its acute variant, which present with an acute inflammatory synovitis due to this crystal deposition, they closely resembles like gout, acute gouty arthritis. And this variant is commonly called pseudogout or false gout. But there are a lot of differences. For firstly, the kind of crystal which is getting deposited is completely different. In uh, gout, we usually get MSU, monosodium urate crystals, which get deposited the joints. But in this case, we are getting calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals getting deposited in the joint. So firstly, the joint, the type of crystal is different in this crystal induced arthropathy or arthritis. Secondly, it would be less painful and it would, it would be more long, means lasting for longer actually, compared to an episode of gouty arthritis. And the association in the, the pseudo gout uh, would be different. Usually it is uh, triggered by some sorts of trauma, some surgery, parathyroidectomy, uh, some condition, metabolic disorders like primary hyperparathyroidism. There could be hypothyroidism, hypomagnesemia. This kind of disorders are known, hemochromatosis. These are the metabolic disorders, various metabolic disorders are known to precipitate the attack of CPPD disease. And obviously in the diagnosis, which you already know that we can entirely differentiate gout from the pseudo gout. Because gout, the type of crystal which are seen, they have two N. I, this way I can I remember that is needle sipped and negatively refringent, birefringent crystals are seen. But in pseudo gout, they would be weakly positive crystals and they usually they are rhomboid and they're quite small in size. Sometimes they may not be seen. So that is the difference. Overall, that means the acute gouty arthritis versus acute synovitis seen due to CPPDTs, which is presenting with uh, 
which we usually call the pseudo gout or false gout. Having said that, the CPPD deposition could result in various other ways. In the chronic form, they, they can closely resemble the rheumatoid arthritis. This chronic crystal induced arthritis, they can have metacarbophilia joint involvement, they can have wrist involvement, it could be polyarticular, and obviously sometimes it could be symmetric. The position could be seen. So these, the, that's why this chronic form of CPPD are also known as pseudo rheumatoid arthritis. That is a pop name popularly it's called. And another form of uh, this CPPD, calcium phosphate dihydrated deposition disease, is seen. That is, they coexistent with osteoarthritis. And it has been seen that around 20% of cases of osteoarthritis, which are planning for the uh, transplantation, actually joint transplant, they, they have a coexistent uh, this disease. That, that means coexistent CPP. And one thing I forgot to involve while differentiating between gout and pseudo gout, usually the gout involves the first MTP joint, the first joint which is involved. Compared to that, this pseudo gout or acute attack of CPD, they usually involve the knee joint. This is one of the key concepts that you need to keep in mind. So till now, what I informed you, I informed you that CPPD is an umbrella term and it's a disease which is caused by a particular crystal calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition. It can have acute form, acute synovitis, which resembles like acute gout arthritis. And it's also known as pseudo gout or false gout, that acute form. But they have some clear cut difference, means ac acute gout arthritis typically involve first MTP joint, the big toe podagra, compared to that, the pseudo gout usually involves the knee joint. Uh, this one also usually this pseudo gout episodes of acute arthritis appeared. They're quite self-limiting and they usually uh, less painful and last longer compared to an episode of acute gout arthritis. And obviously they're diagnosed the type of crystal uh, under the polarized microscopy, light microscopy. Compensated polarized light microscopy is the type of crystals, the appearance of the crystals are different. In gout, there will be negatively birefringent needle shaped crystal, which is chemically made of monosodium urate. And in this uh, false gout or pseudo gout, the crystals would be made of calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate. And the crystal's type would be rhomboid, usually quite small, even could be 0 0.5 micron the size. And usually they are weakly positive. And after that, you also need to keep in mind that. This CPPD, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, many cases could remain asymptomatic. And usually they, they have found nowadays that the most prevalent form is their association with coexistent osteoarthritis. And there is a chronic crystal induced arthritis is also there. And that, that closely resembles rheumatoid arthritis, which is also known as pseudo rheumatoid arthritis. So some of the key points in CPPD that now I think you can summarize that it could be chronic, it could be acute, it could be asymptomatic, it could be present in neuropathic degeneration, and it could coexist in osteoarthritis. It's usually seen, the CPPD deposition is in elderly population. A median age they have seen around 70 years. So it's a quite, it's a disease of elderly population. And another key feature of CPPD that they could be associated with some coexistent diseases. Some form is also they have seen genetically, genetic variant also they have seen. Other than that, you need to keep in mind that if you get a patient of CPPD at a very early age, uh, you need to rule out certain disorders like primary hyperparathyroidism, hemochromatosis, hypothyroidism, hypomagnesemia, all these diseases. And lastly, the diagnosis part of this disease uh, one thing is that, firstly, radiographically. Radiographically, this disease, this disease CPPD, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, they present with chondrocalcinosis. C-H-O-N-D-R-O, chondro, that means cartilage. Calci, C-L-C-I, that means calcification. And osis means a state. So in this disorder, what happens? The cartilage in the joint, they become calcified. This is a characteristic feature which is quickly picked up in the radiological. And if you do arthrocentesis, and you, arthrocentesis means mean taking out a fluid from the joint and examining them actually, that 
test, you usually see that obviously, particularly in case of pseudo gout or acute inflammatory state, you'll be getting that there is a high means leukocyte count, particularly made of neutrophils, there will be total high count, cell count would be seen in the joint fluid. And in the joints, within the macrophages, you can see the presence of some rhomboid shaped small crystals, which are basically calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals. And these crystals are weakly positive pyrefringent, and usually a rhomboid set. So these are the, and particularly now, uh, the no specific etiology, no specific pathogenesis, that why these crystals are deposited, they have been found till date, actually. But they think that, that some portion of the joint cartilage or the joint constituent, actually, glycosamine glycans, they might be degenerated or destroyed, which can precipitate this condition. But as I mentioned, there's still, uh, there's no specific mechanism which explains this. And always, always, you also need to rule out the secondary cause which is causing this and you need to uh, rule out that disease. That in a patient of CPDs, you need to rule out uh, primary hyperparathyroidism, you need to rule out hypomagnesemia, you need to rule out hypothyroidism, you need to rule out hemochromatosis, this test you can, various tests you can do to rule out this disease. Uh, so, in summary, what are the key points that you need to know? And also, I would, as I already answered that query which you have asked, that uh, I would say that pseudo gout is a particular term which is currently used only for the acute inflammatory synovitis caused due to CPPD, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. But CPPD is a, quite a big term and it can present in many ways pseudo rheumatoid arthritis. It can present with uh, Coexistent with osteoarthritis, it could present with uh, asymptomatic, it could present with neuropathic degeneration. It's a disease of elderly population. Radiographically, it is characterized by chondrocalcinosis, calcification of the cartilage. But also keep in mind that chondrocalcinosis is not synonymous with CPPD. That means Chondrocalcinosis could occur in other conditions also, other than calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. And also it could be coexistent with some genetic disease. Genetic disease could uh, result in CPU deposition. Could be also due to some other diseases like hemochromatosis, primary hyperparathyroidism, hypomagnesium disease. And usually the crystals, particularly in the acute cases, we see the crystal, uh, we usually see the crystals which could be seen within the macrophages. And basically these macrophages, when they try to end up this crystal, inflammasome activation occurs and also a lot of cytokines activation. Cytokines get released and that usually results in the acute inflammatory episodes, quite similar like gout. And that's why I usually call it the acute episode pseudo gout. And obviously the crystals, which are very important that you need to keep in mind in this CPPD crystals are weakly positive by refringent and they are rhomboid cell. So that's all for this session number 101, which we are discussing on the pseudo gout. In the future, I would also discuss some differences in the pathogenesis as well as diagnosis aspect of the gout to compare with this. Thank you very much for attending.